We should be praying and offering up this sacrifice of the Lord that he have mercy on us. And I'm sure you all realize that if this thing goes one way, it's only the first of many. And uh, the Lord will purify his church through great suffering. And so let's also pray for our own conversion today. So let's uh, repent for our sins. We have in the first reading an example of biblical teaching on intercession. The people have just sinned. They have made a calf out of gold and they're all worshiping it. And they're saying, these, this is your God who took you out of the land of Egypt. I mean, how insulting could they be? And so God is saying, you know, uh, let me alone. Let my wrath blaze up. And Moses prayed. Now the text we have here is one of his prayers. There's another text where he says the same thing, you see. I will blaze up to consume them, and I'll make of you a great nation. Moses could have said, well, thank you very much for the privilege. I'm happy to be the founder of a new people. And in the other text, he says, if you're going to blot them out, blot me out too. That's what God wanted to hear. That's intercession. That's what Jesus does. He joins us. That's why he could be baptized in the Jordan for sin. Not his, ours. We just had last Sunday, remember? He who knew no sin, God made sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. So here, then we have this prayer. This one, he's saying, Lord, Think of your own reputation. You brought them out. Now they die. Everyone's going to say, God killed them. You brought them out here to kill them. Anything. Any prayer. And what God sees is the heart of this man who's praying like this, so identified with his people. Now we're passing right now through a crisis in this nation. Intercede. Seriously. Take time today to pray. We have a day or so. I don't know when they're actually going to vote. But pray for this poor nation. Something could be imposed upon this nation that would lead it into greater sin. And where there's darkness... They're Satan. Think of our youth. I'm going down to talk to the young people down in Florida. Their lives are just beginning. Should it be in an environment where it's easier to practice evil than good? Pray. It's very important. And carry this through. So I mentioned um, the Mass, my attention for the Mass is for this nation today, that all the power of this act of love in which our Lord died be poured out on them. But you see, there's three things in, uh, in intercession. First, the gift of mourning, to mourn evil, our own first. I know somebody once who said to the Lord, Lord, look, there must be just one spot, one where all this evil originates. Why don't you blot it out? And he said, look out, it might be you. We don't know, considering the privileges we've been given, how many people involved in voting for this thing have received the blessed sacrament in their life, have heard the word of God. Mourn. That's the first thing to do. You see. 
really be sorry. Mourn. You see? And then out of that comes intercession. Lord, have mercy on us. When, when our Lord died, when he went to heaven, he entrusted the whole world to us. And what have we done? After two millennia, how many people really believe in Jesus? How many people are overwhelmed by the example of people who believe in God, love God, obey God, love one another, care for the poor, care for those who don't. Have we overwhelmed them with an example of what the grace of God is really all about? I don't think so. So we repent. Look out, it might be you. See, we repent. Now, this is not a guilt trip. This is an invitation to repent. In the name, it's hard for us. We're such individualists, you know. We are the church, my friends. Have mercy on us. We just had Daniel the other day, right? Daniel is praying for, Lord, have mercy on those people. Is he? No. Lord, have mercy on us. Our fathers sinned against you. They made this golden calf. They never were faithful to you. And we're no better than they are. Two thousand years to preach the gospel. And look at the mess. Seriously, in a country founded by people with all their justice, you know, who wanted to practice re their Christian religion and freedom. That's why they came here. And look at us. So you see, it's repentance first. We're not praying for all those sinners out there. We're praying for ourselves. And so it's very important. And this is a crucial weekend. Pray. You see, if it comes right to this point, and then we get scared enough to start really praying, God may just lift it say, okay, now stay scared and stay praying so I don't have to give it back to you. A little reality therapy. You see, because this is going to affect us. Close the schools, close the churches, close the, who knows what's going to happen. So maybe we're scared enough to really start praying. That would be such mercy. The church has to be purified. It can't go on like it is. Right? Everybody knows that. Starting with me, the church has to get purified. So, if I really have a conversion, maybe, and we all have one, maybe the Lord will let this happen. But it's that important and it's not insignificant that we have that, uh, this text of Moses. Huh? And the other one, if you're going to blot them out, blot me out too. That's Jesus. Totally identified with us. And pray from out of that sinful stance. First, just apologize to God for the mess we've made of the church. Everybody an egomaniac, everybody out for themselves. And then pray. Well, Our Lady has come how many times in the last just century and a half has she come to talk to us, the Mother of God herself. How many times, how many places? Nobody knows. Always the same message, right? Say the rosary and pray for this poor world. That's another Moses. Huh? Imagine the purity of her prayer. 
We are her people. She prays for us. And she prays for the whole world. And she comes. And uh, it's all summed up, I think, in this little phrase she said to one of the girls at Mejigoria. The girl had a rosary around her wrist. And Our Lady said, listen, that's not supposed to be a decoration on your wrist. You're supposed to be praying that. That's a good mother, right? But it's true. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit come and touch many hearts and save us from all that could happen and bring hearts back to him and save the thousands and thousands of young conceived children in the womb of their mothers from abortion and save this nation from sinking into a morass of sensuality. Let us pray.